Hey there, and welcome to Tucker's Test Kitchen, the only test kitchen on the internet that pays its minority workers. So you've seen the title of this video. Uh, you probably have an opinion on it, one way or another. Uh, but the thing is, I don't care what your opinion is. I only care about facts and science and knowledge. I want to be able to definitively say, one way or the other, if Pop-Tarts are or are not ravioli. Uh, so we're actually going to do it. It's been a while since I've done a proper science experiment, so I figured we could uh, go down the steps of the scientific method, as, uh, as taught to me at least, in elementary school, and uh, see where we come out at the end. The problem statement's actually quite straightforward. We just want to know if Pop-Tarts are or are not ravioli. Uh, that's going to be fairly easy to test. Now, the phrase Pop-Tarts are ravioli, I feel like implies a two-directional relationship. That means ravioli are also Pop-Tarts. But we're not going to test that, because I think that relationship's a little more clear. If you take a Pop-Tart and put traditional ravioli filling in it, then you've basically just made a meat pie, and it's probably okay, and it's going to be tasty. But I'm not so sure about the other direction, and that's what we're going to test today. I realize I just said I don't care about your opinions, but, uh... I mean, the scientific method says gather data, so... I asked 10 people if they thought Pop-Tarts were ravioli, which was my mistake. Asking an even number of people to answer a question is like going to Bangkok on business. You might end up in a tie. So that's my bad, but I think the interesting things here are the justifications given for those answers. Some of these are really good, and even now as I'm editing this video, my belief in the answer that I found at the end has been shaken. Also, thank you to all those who responded. So in this case, a hypothesis is just my opinion of what I think is going to happen, um, because it's all subjective, it's a flavor. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, handmade ravioli with Pop-Tart filling inside of them. I think that's going to be fine. I think that's going to taste just fine. But I'm also going to ice them, and I think that's where it's going to get too weird for me. I think that's where we're going to cross the line of that's too much Pop-Tart in my ravioli. I got some frozen fruit. It's going into the Pop-Tart filling. I got some strawberries, some blueberries, and some medley of berries. I think that's a good wide gamut of the fruit flavored Pop-Tarts that you would get. I'm also going to make a chocolate kind because I know those are popular as well. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So the concept for the fillings are very simple. I'm going to show you with the strawberries, but it's the same for all of them essentially. Uh, I don't want to make a lot of this, so I'm going to give it one cup strawberries, give it a quarter cup of sugar, give it a teaspoon of cornstarch to thicken it up, a teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm realizing now I definitely should have used a smaller saucepan. Really the concept here, there's no liquid in here, we're just trying to smash all of the liquid out of the strawberries, uh, and a potato smasher would be pretty helpful. <laughs> if I had one! So after it's been boiling for a little bit, uh, we have this piping hot, soupy, pectin mess. About that consistency. It's okay if there's a little bit of solid stuff in there. I think it's okay because they're ravioli and you want some texture to your ravioli. So um, I'm not too worried about that. And there you go. It's a uh, strawberry goop. I'm gonna make some other goop. I'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to make the chocolate filling while the uh, piping hot sugar fruit mess calms down. Uh, so we're going to do this on low heat. We're going to give it about an eighth of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, a third of a cup of heavy cream. Is this heavy cream? Not just regular milk. I'm going to give it a very, very healthy amount of chocolate chips here. This is semi-sweet morsels. A little heaping quarter cup there and see where that gets us. This isn't all of it, we're just gonna let this melt down and mix here for a second. Okay, so now that the sauce is thickened up, I've taken it off the heat. I'm gonna add another heaping quarter cup of uh, morsels. Give it a tablespoon of butter. Bloop. I'm also gonna give it a splash of vanilla. We're just going to do that until the butter's all gone and all the chips are all gone and everything's nice and homogenous. Uh, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and just put this right into the fridge onto a trivet because I want this to thicken up like the fruit's doing by itself, but this won't do it by itself. It needs some help. Put this guy right in here. Let it firm up while we do the next step. Yay! So much 
much effort for such little reward. So now we gotta make some pasta dough. We're gonna take two eggs, teaspoon of olive oil, and a tablespoon and a half of water. Then we're gonna beat that together. I'm just gonna give it just a little bit of salt. And then we're gonna take two cups of flour and just kind of make a mountain on the table here. Okay, and in this mountain of carbohydrates, we're just gonna make a, a well here. And despite being half Italian, I am by no means an expert at this. So we're just, we're just guessing here. No, it's leaking. Oh God, no, no, no. That's what left hand's supposed to do. Ah, I've given up on the mountain shape. I think this has just become, the mountain shape just, it just fell apart way too easily. There's your pasta dough. <laughs> I mean, it's, it doesn't feel like the way I remember it, but uh, eh, it should be good, it should be all right. Okay, so I've made even more of a mess here. Uh, I'm just going to flatten this out. The dough's had a chance to rest. So I'm just Whew. Okay, so we got a nice, like nice square here that we can work with. I'm gonna cut these edges off because they're not gonna be useful here and I can reuse them. So I'm just gonna just cut a rough square out. And upon this rock, I will build my ravioli. Ravioli, ravioli, what's in the pocket only? Well, good question. We got blueberry stuff, strawberry stuff, mixed berry stuff, and of course, this uh, coagulated chocolate stuff, that's not... Okay, we'll let that sit up to room temperature real quick. Give it a nice, generous helping. Oh no, we can get we can get 12 out of this. Yeah, I wasn't, I didn't exactly have a game plan going in how big these ravioli should be, but that's okay. And then the real question mark here, <laughs> let me get another four. The real question mark here is, uh, what's the chocolate going to do? I will give it this, it's forming up a lot more like uh, like something you would put inside of a ravioli, right? Sure, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the center, cut down in quarters, and that's the idea, but you can already see the problem. Can you tell I've like never made proper ravioli before? I've given up at any kind of like presentation style. Are these even ravioli anymore? Or are they Pop-Tarts? Hmm. Okay, so let's do, let's separate them here. Okay, well some of these look like real ravioli. Uh, some of these look like they have DNA problems. Okay, so I got some uh, water at a kind of rolling boil. I don't want to just, you know, eviscerate these things. Start with strawberry. See how that does. Best of luck, little guys. And these will probably take about four or five minutes to cook. I'm just going to whip up a little bit of frosting with uh, some heavy cream and some powdered sugar just until it feels like it's the right consistency. Here are the strawberry ones. Uh, they look a lot like Pop-Tarts, <laughs> uh, except for like, you know, the dough is a little different. Uh, they're cooling off. It looks like my containment protocol seemed to have worked. These were the interesting ones to ice because, you know, the quintessential strawberry Pop-Tart. And of course, no Pop-Tart is complete without non -parels. God, isn't that just something? So I re-iced one of the strawberry ones uh, just so I didn't have to do as much work for the thumbnail. And uh, it's doing a lot better because it's much cooler. But uh, the chocolate one I, it benefits from being hotter. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. So uh, let's just eat, I guess. For palate cleanser, I'm going to use Lacroix, lemon flavored, which uh, Lacroix I imagine is French for uh, fruit water that is surrendered and now tastes like this. I'm going to go chronologically from how I took them out. So the first one that came out was the strawberry one. Now, my hypothesis is that. Uniced, it'll be fine, but iced, it'll just be way too weird. Uh, so let's, uh, they're a little stiff. I imagine that's just because I didn't roll it very thin. That 
That's a solid maybe. Let's try, let's try one of these iced ones. Mm. <laughs> now it's interesting. I don't mind the icing as much as I thought I would. Now I have no doubt that blueberry will be a similar story. Oh yeah, that's fine. These are kind of messy to eat though. I imagine if I didn't have so much facial hair, I'd look like the Joker at this point. Blueberry is good. Mixed berry, I assume will be the same. They all stayed together really well. I'm impressed. I didn't think they would. Here's another thought. Maybe the icing is only better because of my bad dough. Because the icing kind of distracts from the bad dough. And the dough still tastes like ravioli. It's just way too thick and the texture is a little off. Um, and it's not very reminiscent of ravioli. But again, it gets me close enough to say that, yeah, I haven't been palate cleansing this entire time. But I think that's okay because these are all very similar. They're all fruity, but the chocolate one I'm worried about. Because the chocolate one I think is gonna be really weird. Because this is like dense chocolate, dense chocolate. These held together pretty well too, but my God, are they hard to pick up. They're flimsier than you would expect. That chocolate's way too intense though. And it does, it does, it tastes just like Pop-Tart filling chocolate does. I mean, it just overpowers the ravioli dough, so I guess maybe without the frosting? Oh, come on. Yeah, I don't know. Chocolate ones, not my not my cup of tea, but uh, the fruit ones? I mean, sure. Okay, so what did we learn today? Uh, well, first off, we've learned that half Italian is not enough to do special things with ravioli. That was a disaster I was not prepared for. But in terms of the science experiment, I mean, it worked. I got close enough at least to uh, inform me that uh, Pop-Tart ravioli works, at least in the fruit end of the spectrum, in the chocolate sweet end of the spectrum, uh, maybe s'mores or, uh, or uh, cinnamon apple. I, I personally don't think I would like it. These were, eh. But I can see someone liking it. I could see someone liking it if that was perhaps their Pop-Tart cup of tea and they really liked those. Um, it's possible. So I guess I can conclude, and for some of you, uh, concede, that uh, Pop-Tarts are ravioli. Please don't make me test if Pop-Tarts are calzones.